Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, dearest respected brothers and sisters, and dearest viewers wherever you may be. From Adam alayhi salam to Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, as we continue on this journey to take lessons from the lives of the Prophet of Allah mentioned in the Quran. Now, before I introduce our dearest respected guest and dearest respected Sayyid, I'd like to remind the viewers that if you do want to call in and ask the Sayyid a question, you can call in on 0203. 5150199 alternatively text in your questions down below now i'd like to say a very huge thank you to all the viewers worldwide calling in uh, texting in their questions on whatsapp twitter um, on all our social media platforms from panama america south america philippines east asia south asia all of these areas around the world and for that on behalf of Imam Hussain TV, on behalf of myself, and on behalf of the Sayyid, I'd like to truly thank you all. But without further ado, the discussion for today, Prophet Adam alayhi salam, Sayyidna, salamun alaykum. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing today? Very well, thanks. Very well, yourself? Alhamdulillah. Brilliant. I see you're out of that Liverpool shirt and into a more formal shirt. Formal I am, formal but shirt. the red Liverpool tie is still there, so we continue the theme. Alhamdulillah. So Sayyidna, straight into the topic. Quick question as, a, as an overview, how confident are you that you are able to create, recreate actually the story of Prophet Adam alayhi salam? Because many people will say that these are all superstitions and quite frankly they go directly against science. I think it's a great question to start off with um, because story of Prophet Adam alayhi salam, you're right, it involves the world of the, the seen and the unseen, especially in relation to our lives today. Because you've got, you know, the, the main protagonists within the story are Adam, the jinn, the angels. Uh, you've got this communication that's coming back and forth between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation. Um, and it's not the easiest story to be able to reconstruct. I'm not going to sit here, you know, for the next hour and say I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Um, in that heavenly abode, wherever that is, and how long it took, and what the exact details of the conversations are. Uh, all I can say for those who say, well, these are just superstitious beliefs, mm. when I come to a conclusion that there is a Lord, that Lord provides me with guidance. Guidance can come in many forms. One form is my intellect, another are the prophets um, of the Lord and the other is uh, the holy book and the Quran provides me uh, with that guidance to be able to understand the story so those who are coming from the door of superstition I reply by saying that no I have a holy book that I believe is the word of God and therefore having come to that conclusion what that holy book then guides me towards um, I believe has come from a prophet who was truthful and trustworthy, receiving revelation from his Lord. And um, I'm not going to deny that we do have some hadiths which, you know, you begin to wonder what, does, what exactly is this hadith pointing to? You know, God created man and uh, created Adam in the image of the Lord. Or you have, for example, Eve was, um, was created from the rib of Adam. Or you've got traditions about Adam's children marrying each other. We're going to come to all of these uh, to show that the world of hadith is open to question for sure. And that Israeli tradition definitely had crept in. In terms of science, if there are areas in which science has differed, while science is not infallible, Islam is open without a doubt. There is no way that a person can live their lives without knowing the world of the seen and the unseen, without knowing the world of the empirical, um, as well as going towards the world of the mystical and revelation. So we're willing to entertain scientific discussion as well. We're not going to deny what science um, will seek to uh, conclude. But see, you bring it on to science because 
when we look at science, you know, we have fossil records that date back millions of years. Now, as we know, uh, these fossil records date back to way before the time of Prophet Adam, alayhi salam. We can both agree on that. Now, you know, could we have gotten this story wrong? Because the, the earth was clearly inhabited by, uh, before Prophet Adam, alayhi salam. Yeah, no doubt, you know, you go to museums around the world and there'll be people who'll show you that there was life form before uh, Nabi Adam alayhi salam. And we don't deny that because we have traditions from the Imams of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam that there were Adams before Adam. Sometimes it says there were a thousand Adams before Adam. Sometimes it says there were millions of Adams before Adam. Wow. Many people imagine that because Nabi Adam alayhi salam is God's representative on the earth that there wasn't life form before Adam alayhi salam. Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, both of them have traditions where they highlight that if you people think you're the first, no. There were worlds before you and there were Adams before you. Okay. Now, when I therefore go to a museum in London or I go to a museum in New York, for example, I can see that there's evidence of fossils or life form before Adam. It's wonderful when I then see Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq telling us that yes, before Adam there was life form. Mm. Then you find that there are traditions that indicate the earth had been created and that there was life form on the earth of different species which it's hard to pin down the definition of. Okay. One of them is the species that's supposedly created from fire known as the jinn. Mm -hmm. Another is a species that's some have described as a humanoid, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, paleontologists have looked at the life form that seemingly has existed before Adam is known to have existed. And you find that there was a form of uh, a human being that seemed to be a very rebellious human being. At the beginning, these two creations, which were there before Nabi Adam, alayhi salam, they seem to be creations who were both worshipping their Lord. Now, someone says... Well, if they're worshipping their Lord, how? Mm -hmm. You know, is yeah. there a prophet for them? For them to be worshipping their Lord? Has a prophet come and invited them? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the reality is that a person can find their Lord simply by reflecting on the signs that surround them. You know, there are, there are people who ask me a question that if, say somebody is living in the Amazon rainforest mm -hmm. and they've never ever heard of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. Yeah. They've never heard of Imam al-Hussein, they've never heard of Karbala, they may have never even heard of the Qur'an, mm -hmm. let's say. That person, what's their judgment? Well, their judgment, if they reflect on the rainforest that surrounds them, the serenity, the peacefulness, the order of the creation around them and nature, and reach a conclusion that there must be a creator and that this was not in vain, that's enough. For they have believed in the central tenet of La ilaha illallah. Or in the central tenant, which was the central tenant of every prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Mm. So what you have before Nabi Adam alayhi salam is that on the earth there is the jinn living there. There is this group of people which some traditions refer to as the Nasnas, but after a certain time where they're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they're, they're recognizing the bounties of their Lord that they become rebellious. Okay. When they become rebellious, you find that the angels are watching all of this. Mm. And the angels are saddened by how the creation of Allah are rebelling against their creator. Mm. So what we therefore have in answer to your question is that we have... Life before Adam. Adams before Adam. Mm. Thousands of years, millions of years. You know, sometimes when you hear that there may have been life form over 30 million years mm. before yeah. Nabi Adam alayhi salam, Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam answers this. He says, million Adams before Adam. There were a thousand Adams before Adam. Mm. So there is no denial. And that's why I said at the beginning of the show that when you're looking at the stories of people like Nabi Adam alayhi salam, there's no harm interacting with the scientific world. The problem with many Muslims is that they're not willing to engage in the discussion with the scientific world. I don't have to agree with every single theory 
in the scientific world. Mm. That's been postulated. But there are some that accord to what the Islamic teachings are providing us. But we believe that, uh, say Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq say that there were a million Adam before Ad Adams before Adam. Now, we believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that Prophet Adam السلام, was the first human being to be created. Now, can we as Muslims possibly believe in a, in a form of dinosaur or evolution? No, dinosaurs, we have no problem in believing. Listen, if there's fossil records, if there's clear evidence that there was, you know, forms of species which may have gone extinct, others which may have evolved, we have no problem with that as well. And we've got no problem with a lot of the theory of evolution. Mm. You know, I, uh, mutations occurring in the environment or animals or species adapting to their environment, we have no problem with that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Many times you'll hear Muslims saying that we completely reject the theory of evolution. No, on the contrary. Yes, someone might reject macro versus micro evolution, meaning mm. that's a whole change from one species to another, maybe something that is rejected. Mm. Whereas different moments where animals adapt to their environment which have existed or there's mutations that may exist, we have no problem with that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to reject these things outright would be to go against a lot of the literature that we have mm. that there was a lot of life form before Nabi Adam alayhi mm. But the idea that, you know, one particular species completely changes into a human being is something that we reject. Now you mentioned that there was a lot of species created before Prophet Adam alayhi um, Now no, we don't see any um, records of you know reactions from the angels when those species were created. But when we see Prophet Adam alayhi created, we see a reaction from the angels. But what was that initial reaction from the angels? Actually, the angels did react when they saw the rebelliousness of the creatures who were there before Nabi Adam alayhi Okay. The angels had a reaction of sadness. Mm. They couldn't believe that this creation that was on the earth, which the fossil records show us existed before Adam, they could not believe that they were so rebellious against the Lord. Mm. Um... And the angels were very hurt by what was happening. And it seems that within Islamic traditions, the Lord decides that, well, of those who are rebellious, there's a punishment. And of those who are of the good, they are to be taken towards another abode. They are to be saved. Mm -hmm. Of which of one of them who's saved has the title of Iblis. Yep. Yes, which we will come to shortly. Yep. So the angels do have that reaction. Now, the angels, it's interesting that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Islamic sources supposedly ends that period or that millennia where the nasnas exist or the humanoids exist, mm -hmm. then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a conversation with the angels which is documented both in the Quran and in the world of hadith. Okay. And the conversation is that I'm going to appoint a representative of mine on the earth. Mm -hmm. And this representative of mine is going to be a representative who's going to show the best of values, is going to be full of justice, is going to have dignity and devotion and intellect and so on. So there is this discussion that occurs between God and the angels. Mm -hmm. Now when this discussion occurs, the discussion is mentioned in the Quran from chapter 2, verse 30 till about 34, 35. Um, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعَنُ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ yes. um, the, Your Lord said to the angels, I'm sending a Khalifa on the earth. Yep. Their reply was interesting. And their reply, according to certain scholars, indicated that they had known of a life form before Adam. Okay. Are you going to send someone who causes mischief and bloodshed? Mm. While we worship you and sing your blessings, how would they have known about a creation that causes mischief and bloodshed mm -hmm. unless yep. there's already been a creation preceding Adam alayhi yep. salam? Some scholars have looked at this in different ways. Some scholars have said the, the very makeup of the human being 
having the power of intellect, but anger, desire, and imagination mm. is a recipe for disaster. If intellect is able to overcome um, one's desires or one's anger, then yes, the human is higher than the angel. Mm. But if the desires and imagination overcome the intellect, yeah. then what you have is that the human can become lower than an animal. It's interesting that there is a discussion that Jibra'il has when, with Adam when Adam is first created, where he, Adam is offered intellect, decency, and devotion. Hmm. Adam takes intellect, and decency and devotion say that we can never leave the intellect. We'll always be alongside the intellect. Yeah. For a person to be an upright individual, intellect's not enough. There has to be a decency about their character. Yeah. And there has to be a devotional aspect to them, which we will come to another occasion. Mm -hmm. So what you have here is that the angels ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's question. Now, the reaction to this question, I'm not sure, you know, you, you find traditions that there is a, a there's a, a remorse on their part, as if there's a punishment give, meted yeah. out against them for questioning God's judgment, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Yeah. Um, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees the matter, it is not for us to question. Yeah. Um, when they say, Are you going to send someone who causes mischief and bloodshed? God, what's happening? Mm. This has happened before. Yeah. You've got people on that earth who are mischievous or rebellious. Again? Yeah. Is that what you're going to do? Is that what's going to happen? And his reply is a wonderful reply. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies, قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ He said, I know that which you do not know. Mm. That you've got a point about the fact that you've seen mischief and rebellion in my creation. Mm. But you're going to see a creation who, not just him, he is one of the greatest of my creation. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see in his loins greater and greater creations who are going to be unbelievable in their dignity, in their intellect, in their devotion, and in their worship. The same way you do tasbih, taqdis, you do the honoring and glorifying, you're going to see a group who are more majestic than even this creation. Subhanallah. Yeah. You mentioned... Uh, you mentioned that of the jinn that were saved, one was Iblis or Shaitan, as we call him. Now, we, hear, we do hear different names for Iblis, let's call him for now. What was his status at the time of the creation of Prophet Adam? Salam? The time of Adam, he, he's, he's in quite a lofty position. Mm. Um, if you're reading the traditions of Ahl al-Bayt, you're looking at somebody who was worshipping his Lord for 4,000 to 6,000 years or more. Wow. Wow. I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so just that even for that act, it's why he gives him respite later on. But he's in a, he's in a, he's in a lofty position. He knows that a decision has been made mm. that God is going to appoint a Khalifa on the earth. He still hasn't come to an understanding as to what this creation is exactly like. Mm. It seems that there are discussions taking place. Because if you're looking at the world of hadith, God, Jibra'il, Israel, all of them are involved in discussions about the creation of Adam. Mm. And there are these interesting traditions about how the earth, when it talks to God, now, you read in the Qur'an, mm. there are numerous verses about how God offered his trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains. Yep. Yep. So, these inanimate seeming creations do have this relationship with their Lord. 
And the earth seemingly in this stage doesn't want parts of it to be taken because it doesn't want from its dust for a creation to be created who's going to be rebellious against the Lord. It's as if the earth has seen that there have been rebellious creations and the earth in these discussions, now these could be, you know, hagiographical hey, discussions or whatever, but it's very interesting that you find that Iblis at this time is in the company of the angels. The Quran gives us this indication. And we still don't find that he's rebelled yet. Mm. He's still witnessing what's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A very important question. Very something that I don't think a lot of people have thought about. What does Adam actually mean? Adam comes from Adim al Ard, which means to be created from the dust of the surface of the earth. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now we hear in the Quran in the famous verses, Walaqat Khalakna al Insan min salsalin min hama im masnoon. Now, the Qur'an mentions the words Masnoon, Hama, Salsal. What are the definitions for all of these? And is there a time period mentioned for how long it took Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create Prophet Adam alayhi Yes, it, 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 it's very interesting that you mentioned that, you know, Hama and Masnoon, Salsal in Kal Fakhar. We hear sometimes in, in wedding ceremonies when the Mawlana sits with the husband and mm. wife who are, you know, giving their lives away. Yeah. Um, you hear Alhamdulillah Alladhi khalaqa Adam min salsal in kal fakhar and you hear this hama, you hear turab, um, you hear other words uh, which are mentioned as well. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib has a phenomenally vivid description of the creation of Nabi Adam alayhi salam. Hama in masnoon. What you have here is, as I said, they're trying to get from the earth they're trying to pull the dust from the earth. The earth tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't want my earth to create or to be part of a creation that's going to rebel against you. Mm. Do you know who takes the task of getting the, the dust from the earth? Israel. And that's why on that moment that he took the dust from the earth, Allah decided he's going to take the people's mm. souls from their bodies. It was at that moment in the creation of Adam alayhi salam, at that moment, as the writer said, you know what? All of you guys keep going to the earth. You're not doing anything about it. I'm doing it. Mm. When they've pulled the dust from the earth, all of these words that then you see are trying to explain to us the process behind the, the, the creation of Adam. Mm. Possibly trying to reply to those who are saying, ape, human, by saying, hold on, hold on. We don't just describe it by saying, although we can and we have by saying, kun fayakun. Mm. We're also going to explain to you the intricacies behind it. Yeah. So we're going to pull dust from the earth uh, pulled uh, the dust from the earth. Earth and the water put together. You're going to have that clay. Mm. We're still going to have these, um, these larger pieces that are there. Yeah. You remove them until you fashion it into as if the way you're fashioning pottery. Salsal and Kalfakhar is this connection to the world of pottery. You know, people yeah. get the clay and they're, and, they're, and they're molding something into shape. Yeah. The Arab mind maybe needs something like this, or not the Arab mind, the human mind today needs something like this to understand that everything is created with mm. precision. The one who has the major problem with this is Iblis. Mm -hmm. On one occasion, now they say that Adam, you know, we, we do have, interesting in the Quran, you know, ayahs such as خَلَقَهُمْ in تُرَابْ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ Fayakun, be and it will be. Allah, you know, no, time doesn't affect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes you hear that we created the heavens and the earth in six days. We created Adam over 80 years. Okay. Now, still in his lifeless form, there is a narration that Iblis walks past. And there is this moment where Iblis suddenly says, clay, fire. Mm. That moment is the downfall. Mm -hmm. Why? Because two attributes come in one moment. And that is Takabbur and Hasad. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. 
These two come in together. And God save you if you have these diseases in your life. Yeah. That, you know, in, in life we have physical diseases. Mm. And you won't get treated straight away. So when I hear someone has cancer, they want to get ke chemotherapy, for example. When I hear someone has diabetes, when I hear someone has HIV, when I hear someone has, you know, there's other el illnesses, they won't get treated. But when you have certain spiritual diseases, they are the worst that you could face. Yeah. Iblis, all of a sudden, is thinking to himself that you created me from fire mm. and you created him from this clay this foul smelling dark clay i'm higher and i deserve that position mm. why is he the one getting that position yeah and that's the downfall now you could have worshipped for thousands of years yeah. but if your worship has a tinge of arrogance thinking that you're better than somebody else in terms of your creation that you know that person doesn't deserve to even be looked at, looking down at people. And that defines a Muslim. What defines a Muslim is really their akhlaq. Mm -hmm. Can they master takabbur? Can they master hasad? Mm. Can they master these, these areas where spiritually they can destroy you? Mm -hmm. There's no point coming and praying or fasting in the holy month of Ramadan, if you're envious of others. You know, there are people yeah. who look extremely religious, but they have so much hasad inside them. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. If they see somebody more famous than them, they perform, they have, they're envious against them. If they see better looking, they're envious against them. Yeah. If they see somebody getting all the plaudits, they're envious against yeah. them. But don't get me wrong, a lot of these look religious. Yeah. You'll see the tasbih, you know, the subha in their hand regularly. The beard growing. The abaya being worn. But they are a walking machine of hasad. Hmm. However much they will talk to you about Ahlul Bayt, yeah. the best thing that can happen to these people is for them to leave society, go purify themselves, then come back. Stop talking about Ahlul Bayt's lives hmm. when you are a machine of hasad. Yeah. What then is the difference between you and shaitan? You claim to be a lover of Ahlul Bayt. Shaitan at that one moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks those angels. Mm -hmm. Allah asked the, an the angels, prostrate to Adam. All of them prostrate except Iblis. He refused. His arrogance overtook him yep. because he thought that he was greater than who? Than Nabi Adam salam. After the break, we'll look at why Adam, the angels, and the beliefs all would realize that he is a greater creation, inshallah. Ahsan was saying that that's a very great reminder to be wary of the disease of envy and arrogance that surrounds our communities today. Inshallah, before we go to the break, I'd like to remind the viewers that if you do want to call in in the second part to ask to say the question, call in on 0203-515-0199 or text in your questions down below, wherever you are in the world. Now, just before we go to the break, um, during the break, a video will play of uh, the 1000 campaign that we have here at Imam Hussein TV. We are looking for kind and generous donors who will be willing to make a monthly contribution towards the channel of a as small as 14 pounds a month and if you want to donate more then we would highly appreciate that so inshallah stay for the break and stay for the second part wassalamu alaikum warahmatullah wa barakatuh <laughs>
a duty towards the preservation and the propagation of the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Indeed, one of the best ways to work towards the reappearance of Imam Al Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajul Sharif is through promoting the values of Karbala. Imam Hussein Media Group is the only Shia television network that broadcasts globally in five different languages Arabic, Farsi, Turkish, Urdu, and English. We are appealing to the lovers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam worldwide to support the channel such that it may continue its global operations. Imam Hussein Media Group is seeking 1,000 partners to pledge to a 14 pound contribution per month. This will allow the channel to sustain its operating costs as we continue to spread the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in multiple languages across the globe. You be a part of this great legacy and donate today. You can pledge in two ways. IHTV.co slash PayPal will take you direct to our donation page where you can pledge monthly. Or you can call or WhatsApp us on 0044-793-991763. Imam Hussain TV, your gateway to Karbala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the second part of Live in London with Dr. Sayyid Amman Naqshawani as we discuss the lives of the Prophets and the lessons we can take from their lives and how to apply them into our lives today. Now, Sayyidina, before the break, we were talking about how, you know, uh, the words masnoon, hamet, salsal. But it goes on to say that the angels themselves, they wondered about Adam. The shaitan himself wondered about Adam. You know, who was this creation? Who was this new creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What was the special criteria for him that made him become the khalifa? Knowledge. Knowledge. The Lord ends the discussion with the angels by saying, إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know that which you do not know. He teaches Adam what the Quran says. He teaches Adam the names. Mm. When he asks Adam to say these names, Adam has the knowledge of them. When he asks the angels, the angels realize that we don't have that knowledge. Mm. God's Khalifa on the earth cannot be somebody who's deficient in their ilm but has to be somebody who can walk around anywhere and say, ask me before you lose me. SubhanAllah, yeah. We can't have somebody as God's Khalifa on the earth who is being corrected 24-7 by people around him because they're making mistakes mm -hmm. in relation to their knowledge. Mm -hmm. You're representing God. Yep. The angels, when God asked them about their knowledge, they realized... That we're lacking something. Yeah. Iblis realizes, but his arrogance is too much mm. to be willing to admit. Mm. And so what you have over here is a key point in understanding monotheism, prophethood, as well as imamah. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses his khalifa on earth. That Khalifa has got to be the one with a God-given knowledge. Mm. That knowledge is communicated at times from God to that Khalifa through Jibra'il. Mm. That's a form of 
a highest form of wahi. Mm. You see, the, uh, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, normal human beings can have limited forms of wahi. Mm. Musa's mother, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ نَرْضَعِيهِ Bees, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ النَّحْلِ There are limited forms of, of, of uh, communication between God and His creation. Mm -hmm. But the highest is either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to his khalifa on the earth through Jibra'il, mm. or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may use dreams, or Allah may inspire. Mm. So what you have therefore is that the angels realize at this moment mm. that his knowledge is higher than ours. His mm. knowledge is a God-given knowledge. Mm. And therefore they all bow in prostration before Adam, except Iblis. But Sayyidina, surely sujood to a human being, is that not a form of polytheism? Yeah, no. Sujood can be divided <coughs> into two. Sujood related to ibadah is different from sujood of ta'zeem. Mm. A sujood of worship is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. When you see Muslims five times a day, say, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdih, that is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The words are clear, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Mm. A sujood of ta'zeem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number one, a test of your obedience mm. at this moment. Their obedience is being tested. Don't tell me I've done prayers for 6,000 years. Mm. It's a key lesson. Mm -hmm. How many prayers you prayed, it could only come down to one act of disobedience. Mm -hmm. And then all of these deeds are nullified. Mm -hmm. So... A sujood of ta'zeem. Now sometimes people ask the question that if I'm going to Najaf or Karbala, sometimes you find people doing sujood when they enter the mosque. Mm -hmm. And that sujood sometimes can be seen towards the grave of that person buried in that land. Mm -hmm. And our maraja are clear. If that sujood is to that person, that's something not allowed. If that sujood is thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. For blessing us with the ziyar of this person, and that is allowed. Yeah. So therefore, the sujood related to ibadah is a sujood different from mm. ta'zim. One is a sujood of worship, another is a sujood of reverence. Now, you mentioned in the previous point that this khilafah, especially because it was sent down to, given to Prophet Adam alayhi salam, it was the khilafah of knowledge. It was the Khilafah of Knowledge. Now, is this Khilafah representative for humans or is it on a spiritual status as well? Yeah, I think it's twofold. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. There are, it depends what context you're discussing this. Mm. If we're discussing for humanity in general, in its relation with the animal kingdom and the angels and the jinn and the plants, then the most honorable creation is the human being. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. has created the spirit which he has breathed into that human being and made him his khalifa on the earth. Mm. Something which the, 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 um, the mountains and the heavens and the earth did not take, mm. but the human took on that trust. And I think it's a great honor if we remind ourselves that we are the khulafa of God on earth. So in some contexts, the human is seen as, you know, general. And then in others, this person is not just the khalifa of Allah as a human, but rather he is also the khalifa who represents the message of God on earth to the rest of humanity. Mm. Therefore, that person is infallible. Therefore, that person is one who receives their knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. That person is chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are certain areas such as ilm, isma, nas, all go and surround the caliph of God on earth. Mm. Yeah. So, when, because I've heard of this tradition. Now, it says that the tradition mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam from Allah's image. Now, is that not also a form of polytheism? Yeah, sometimes you hear this tradition, God created Adam in his own image. Or God created man in his own image. Mm. 
And I know that that affected certain Christian beliefs, even some Muslim beliefs. There are some Muslims in the world who believe Allah has a face, Allah has hands, Allah has a shin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sits on a throne. We differ with them. Of course. Um, when, it's, when we say God created Adam in his own image, it means God created Adam in the image that was already ordained in the God tablet. Mm. Meaning that there was an image that was ordained for Adam and the children of Adam. And that, you know, we talk of the Lohim Mahfuz, the preordained yeah. God tablet. That was the image in which Adam was created. Nothing to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being in any human or physical form. Yeah, okay. Now with Iblis, with Shaitan, now this can directly link to us, it can directly link to the viewers out there. It's, it's a special case where envy and arrogance has now become such a big thing in our communities that people aren't able to essentially control it. Now... When, when is it that envy and arrogance kicked in for Iblis? When was it that moment where Iblis said, you know what, this creation is not better than me? No, like I said, Iblis, um, Iblis recognized that Adam is created from clay mm. and that he's created from fire. Mm. And that was the cause of his expulsion. Mm. You know, from his highest state, he was lowered from that state. Um, you know, he was in the company of the angels in the highest position and then he was expelled mm. and he was expelled simply because of that moment of arrogance that he displayed. Uh, so he could not take the fact and he even makes it clear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want me to do sujood to you, I'll do sujood to you, but never to Adam. Mm -hmm. Obedience to Allah isn't on my terms. Yeah. It's on the terms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. If it was on my terms, we'll make a mockery of this religion. I'll say, Ya Allah, I'll pray five times a day, I'll fast in Ramadan. But if you don't mind, the rest of you, I want to drink alcohol, I want to commit adultery, I want to gamble and so on. Mm. No, there's a complete submission. And that's what Iblis lacks. Mm -hmm. And it's from that moment onwards that Iblis has this enmity. Mm. That I was in the loftiest of positions. But you could be in the loftiest of position with that drop of arrogance in you. Mm. And that drop of envy, you could fall easily. Mm. But with, the, with that arrogance, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have easily just destroyed the Iblis. Mm. Just there and then, destroyed the Iblis, and we wouldn't have even heard from him. Um, but what is it that Iblis asks from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if, you know, what he asked from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, did Allah grant him that wish? And we could look on the other side. Did Prophet Adam ask anything from Allah? from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if he did, did Allah grant him his wish? Yeah, I think Nabi Adam could not believe if you look at certain traditions, Nabi Adam's asking questions, why is this Iblis not destroyed for this moment? Mm. And it seems the reply is that Iblis still did some good. Okay. Allah is so just, he doesn't forget that good. Mm. If Iblis was to ever ask for forgiveness for what he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about sujood to Adam, Allah would forgive him. Wow. Until now, if Iblis was to ask for forgiveness. But people like Iblis and others who've come from the children of Iblis in history, however many opportunities they have, they don't take them. So therefore, Allah wow. subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Iblis, as we mentioned earlier, worshipped God for four to 6,000 years or more, Allah gave him that respite. Mm. There's then these conversations. Iblis begins to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for certain things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to give him a number of things. I think the one area where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give to Iblis is Iblis wants to be able to manifest himself as a prophet or as an imam. Mm. And that Allah does not give him. Yeah. Nabi Adam witnessing Iblis in his fall, asking Allah and Allah still replying. Nabi Adam then begins to ask Allah himself for certain things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants Adam these things. Amongst them, for example, is, oh Adam, <coughs> no one thing that your people, if they have a niyyah and intention to do a good deed, 
I will reward them for that intention. And if they do the good deed, we'll multiply it by 10. Mm. Know that with your people, whenever they ask for forgiveness, the doors of Toba are always open for them. So there's these interesting discussions yeah. that take place at this moment. Yeah. So you know, we're going to take a couple of questions coming in from WhatsApp. Um, the question is, my question is, Shaitan misguides human beings and makes them disobey Allah. What made him disobey God? What made him disobey? You know, his disobedience to God directly is not a disobedience in the sense of him having a problem with God. He just had a problem with God telling him to do sujood mm. to Adam. That he could not take. Mm. And that arrogance brought his downfall. Now, why is it... Now, you mentioned that arrogance, that disease. Why, why then let Iblis continue with that arrogance? 4,000 years he had worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore because of that 4,000 years Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honoured him in which sense? In the sense that I'll let you live until the day that they are raised. Mm -hmm. However, the rest of the arrogance that he displayed after that you know the Quran mentions his conversations I'm going to come to them from every angle I'm going to destroy them He even says he tries his hardest to deceive. And I think the main deception that is mentioned is the deception in relation to Adam and the tree. Mm. So, there's a mention of uh, God creating Eve from the rib of Adam, alayhi mm. uh, That narration. Yeah. Would you be able to highlight? Yeah, no such thing. We don't believe in it. We don't believe you know, this whole idea that Eve was created from the rib of Adam. These are amongst the Israeliyat that can be found um, not just in other schools, but also within our school. And we reject this. The same clay Allah used, which we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. to create Nabi Adam, from that same clay he created Eve alayhi mm. yeah. Now how long was it that Eve and Adam resided in that garden of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They had resided there for a seven hour period, according to many of the traditions. Mm. Shaitan sought to find a way to ruin what was happening. Remember, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of them could look up to Nabi Adam. Nabi Adam really had no one to look up to. Mm -hmm. And therefore, with Nabi Adam alayhi salam, what you had was that him and Eve are living in this heavenly abode. Mm. There are different opinions as to what this heavenly abode is. Some say it's the Jannah that we're going to go to after we die. Mm -hmm. Others say that it's somewhere on the earth. You've heard of serendipity? So they say there's an area called Sarandib, some say in Sri Lanka, that that was where the, they were. Others say that somewhere between the heaven and the earth, a type of barzakhi realm. There are different opinions, mm. irrespective that while Adam and Eve are in this garden, let's say, Iblis is trying his hardest to affect them, mm. to tempt them. The narrations mention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them, enjoy whatever you want of that garden, except mm. that tree. Yeah. Be careful. The Quran mentions that he's going to deceive them and that if you're going to have anything from that tree, it's going to make you go to the earth and toil in the earth. Mm, okay. It doesn't say, I'm going to be angry with you. I'm going to punish you. You would have sinned. And that's the point about Nabi Adam. Did he commit a sin? Mm -hmm. Firstly, he's in a heavenly abode. Mm. There's no sin in that area. There's sin on the earth. Yeah. Because there's a sharia, a particular legislative system. If I go against it, I commit a sin. In that heavenly abode, there's no sin. Mm. Therefore, if there's no sin, then Allah's command is not a command of prohibition. Mm. You know, we have two types of commands. Amr Mawlawi and Amr Irshadi. Yeah. Command of prohibition, a command of recommendation. Mm -hmm. A command of prohibition is not in that heavenly abode. That serendipity, wherever that area is. It's not in that heavenly abode. So it's a command of recommendation. Mm. I recommend you. Do not eat from that tree. tree. I say to you, Minhal, I recommend you, don't eat sweets from that shop because eating that many sweets 
is going to affect your health. When you eat the sweets from that shop, are you committing haram? No. no. But you're going against my recommendation. Yep. Imam al-Bakr was asked, why would Nabi Adam listen to shaitan? Mm -hmm. Why would he listen? Knowing what shaitan has done. Mm -hmm. And Imam al-Bakr answers this in a beautiful way. Imam al-Bakr says, nobody up until that point had sworn by Allah and lied. You know, mm -hmm. we Iraqis, we love to say, wallah, 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 wallah. Every second of the day we say this, correct? Yep. We always are swearing by Allah. Other languages uh, will say, billahi. Others say, tallahi. <laughs> Others, if you don't want your, your, your parents to know that you're lying, you'll say, Wallah, you know, something like this. Everybody will be swearing by Allah now. Someone may lie. Mm. Up until that point, nobody has said, by Allah, if you eat from that tree, nothing will happen to you. Mm. Nobody had ever said that and lied. Mm. Nabi Adam, therefore, that whole discussion that occurred, that whole context was a context relating to an induction program, a mm. training program. Some said, Adam's been expelled from heaven. Mm. Hold on, it was only half an hour ago that I said, the Quran says, Inni fil ardi khalifa. Mm. Allah has chosen a khalifa on the earth. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, I've chosen a khalifa on the earth, that means whatever Adam's gonna go through, he's still my khalifa. Mm. But now he's aware. Yeah. Shaytan is the open enemy. Yeah. Now Adam is aware. Shaytan is the open enemy. Some said it was his wife Eve that's the reason he committed a sin and therefore all of the uh, womankind was punished because of Eve. This is nonsense. Again, Israeliyat entering Islamic traditions. Adam and Hawa went through this induction program where they realized. Now you have certain theologians who looked at this issue. Why? Because if the Shia believe that every prophet is ma'soom, wasn't this a sin? We made it clear. Number one, it can't be a sin where it was. You know, you're not going to be sinning in that heavenly garden, yep. you know, wherever it may be. Secondly, it's not a command of prohibition. Command of prohibition relates to the world of taklif. The world of taklif <laughs> relates to the earth. Adam is still not on the earth, earth as God's khalifa. Yeah. Thirdly, this concept of infallibility mm. is a fundamental concept which has been alluded to with a discussion on Tarq al-Awla. Mm -hmm. Interesting that you have this discussion of Tarq al-Awla where we'll look at it with Adam, we'll look at it with Musa, we'll look at it with Isa, that he went for, instead of going for the recommended, he went for that which was good. Mm. He didn't go for that which was better. Yep. He left that which was better. Mm. That again is not seen as being a sin. Okay? So when you're looking at the idea, did Adam commit a sin? Where was Nabi Adam alayhi salam? That's not the world of Sharia, not the world of Taklif. Yeah. Therefore, it was not a sin. However, they did leave that particular area to go into another area. Now, say so just, um, you know, just quickly because we are quite running out of time. Where was their abode on earth? Oh, their abode on earth was within the vicinity of uh, Mecca. Adam was on Mount Safa. Eve was on Mount uh, Marwa. Safa, okay. assalamu alayka ya waritha Adam. Safwati. Safwati. So even that line in Ziyarat Warit, Safa, he was there. Hmm. Eve was where? On the hillcock of Marwa, Amra, um, lady, woman, yeah. Ma Marwa. Yeah. So she was there. And they were, and there was a sense of sadness that they were away from, you know, they, they were away from that garden. Mm. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ensured that surrounding them, they, they, uh, they, they were the ones who actually, according to some opinions, begun the structure of the Kaaba. Mm. The, the Hajar al Aswad mm -hmm. was placed within the first structure of the Kaaba. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were the ones who did the first Hajj. Mm. They went towards Arafah. And it was near Arafah where he begins to ask Allah for forgiveness. Now, when he begins to ask Allah for forgiveness, he, Adam, Prophet Adam is known as one of the Bakka'un, mm. one of the criers. Mm. You know, who were the other criers? Why was he known as one of the criers? 
And how did his repentance from the Lord get accepted? Well, some ask the question, if he's asking Allah for forgiveness, that must mean he must have sinned. Mm. No, not necessarily. Um, we can never do justice to what Allah has given us in life. Yeah. And if we for a second feel that we have not given that justice, then we keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive us. We have not given you your due. Mm. We didn't do enough tasbih, we didn't do enough salawat, we haven't read enough Qur'an. It's not because you committed a sin that you're saying istighfar. You just feel that you should give much more yeah. back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, he's there at Mount Arafah, standing yeah. there the way many of us stand there on the, in the period of Hajj. Um, and it's at that Mount Arafah, around that area where he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But interestingly, he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with five names mentioned. Ahsant, yep. And this is fundamental. You can ask Allah directly. Yeah. But when you mention Muhammad and Al Muhammad, Salawatullah wa salamu alayhi it makes a huge difference to your dua. I always say to people, the tradition of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, a dua has a veil on it. Mm. Salawat removes that veil. Mm. What does Adam say? Bihaqi Muhammad wa anta al Mahmud wa bihaqi Fatima. وأنت فاطر السماوات والأرض وبحق ال... وبحق علي وأنت الأعلى وبحق الحسن وأنت المحسن وبحق الحسين وأنت قديم الإحسان. He asks Allah سبحانه وتعالى يا الله forgive me and my wife and this is a wonderful supplication and as you mentioned wonderfully they're known as بكاؤون him later we'll see نبي يوسف نبي يعقوب فاطمة الزهراء إمام زين العابدين not just talking to Allah, there is a tear shed when they talk to mm. Allah. Nabi Adam establishes for us a number of different acts of worship. Salah is important to him. He does the tawaf. He stones shaitan. Shaitan can't get to Adam anymore. Yeah. Shaitan tried, Adam learned the lesson, you're not coming near me anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are many wonderful lessons to be gained from that period of his life. Mm. Yeah. So say just quickly before we end the show, um, this is, I think this is a question that's been on everyone's mind. When you, when you think of Adam and Eve, you think, you know, they had this family, they created this family, Qabil, Habil. Okay, how many kids did they have? You know, how did we procreate? Because, you know, Adam, Eve, Qabil, Habil, or maybe other children. Yeah. But then, you know, surely to continue the human life, you need a form of partner yeah. To, yeah. To, to procreate. Yeah. So how was it that they procreated? Yeah, they had, procreate? they had a daughter by the name of Anak. 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 Um, and they had the son Qabil and another son Habil. And another son who we're going to come to tomorrow who was known as Sheath. Mm. Now... Anna started off her life in a good way, but then became extremely indecent, corrupted um, individual. Oh, wow. But yes, people ask, hold on a minute, if there's no other humans on earth, then how do they procreate? How do we have the rest of uh, humanity? The answer is very simple. The same Lord who created them can create species for them to marry. Mm -hmm. Simple as. We reject this incest and we throw it away. Yeah. We have mentioned a number of Israelia today that have to be thrown out. Amongst them, Eve being created from the rib of Adam. Amongst them, that Adam's children slept with one another, had an ancestral relationship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create creations who act as partners for this particular family. Procreation occurs from there. One line, Qabil's line continues. And tomorrow's line we'll see with Prophet Sheith alayhi salam. So we reject these stories about brother and sister sleeping with each other. So humanity continues. If incest is wrong, Today, it was wrong from the very beginning. Ahsantum, yeah. Sayyidina. Ahsantum. Um, Sayyidina, let's just take a few questions from WhatsApp. Yep. Um, this question coming in from uh, New York City. My name is Rashid from NYC and I have a question. How come the angels questioned God's will when he decided to create Adam? Aren't they, peace be upon them, supposed to be when they ordered as stated in the Quran? I think you answered that already. Now, um, in terms of Qabil and Habil, mm. the two brothers, one was devout to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other went directly against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you mentioned, their sister, who later on became indecent, 
What was this story of Qabin? Like, what was... What led one to kill the other? Well, I think the first lesson we learn is just because you're a prophet of Allah doesn't mean your kids are all religious. Mm. Sometimes we imagine that when we hear a family has a religious surname, it means that everybody in that family is going to be religious. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, in the same way the fingers on our hands are all different in shapes and size, likewise, the family members, uh, you may find religious and non-religious. And Nabi Adam alayhi salam, inshallah, tomorrow's show, we go towards his death and who succeeds him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never leaves the earth without appointing a guide. Mm. And it's the role of the Khalifa to announce that next guide. Mm -hmm. He's not just going to leave it to people who are going to choose people based on their own whims and desires. Mm. Qabil is the eldest son. He thinks he should be the leader. He doesn't realize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't choose you on the basis of you being the eldest son. He chooses those who are fit to look after his message. Mm -hmm. So what you have then is this second case of envy. Qabil hears that his father Adam announces that Habil will succeed him, has been chosen by Allah. Qabil cannot take this. And subhanallah, how many times in life we see that there's fights between brothers, yeah. arguments between brothers, brothers who do not talk to one another. Mm -hmm. And it continues that there are brothers until today who are willing to fight each other. In this case, not just fight. Kill. He wants to kill him. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And the reply of Habil highlighted the piety of Habil. The reply of Habil was, you put forward your hand to kill me. There's no way I'm putting forward my hand to kill you. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I don't want to start an altercation. You're actually going to kill me simply because I've been announced as the successor of Nabi Adam alayhi salam. Mm. Nabi Adam says, okay, both of you make an offering. And there are different narrations about the offerings that they make. Um, inshallah, on tomorrow night's show, when we talk about the death of uh, Habil, and then why Allah gifted sheath to Nabi Adam, mm. we'll see how these offerings, how they were accepted, mm. and then we'll see how the family continued from there. That was actually my question on what the offerings were. But um, thank you very much, Sayyidina. Thank you for your time tonight. Inshallah, iftar won't be... Too long for you. Inshallah. Inshallah. I'd like to thank the viewers for tuning in to this live show with Dr. Sayyid Amman Naqshawani on this uh, very beautiful and insightful topic, starting with Prophet Adam alayhi salam and inshallah ending the 30 nights with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. Inshallah, join us tomorrow as we go in depth on Prophet Adam's son, Prophet Sheith alayhi salam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Hey, hey, hey.